Imagine that there are state-run prisons in which prisoners only get 10 squares of toilet paper each week. And single ply. Let's go with single ply. And if they want any more, they have to buy it. Uh, But because they only earn about five cents per hour, they can't actually afford any unless they have someone on the outside who's giving them money. And imagine that if they run out of toilet paper and end up getting feces or urine on their uniforms, they're punished. And they're sometimes punished by not being allowed to buy things at the commissary, things like more toilet paper. I'm sure that if you describe that situation to state lawmakers, they would be appropriately shocked and want to do something about it, I hope, if they're empathetic humans. Um, Something like making toilet paper a basic sanitary right for prisoners. Unfortunately, a very similar situation didn't go nearly so well for prisoners in Arizona, where menstruating people are given just 12 menstrual pads per month, which is about half of what the average menstruating person uses. Uh, If they want tampons or more pads, they have to buy them. If they run out and they bleed all over their clothes, then they're punished. And yes, sometimes those punishments include not being allowed to buy more menstrual products. State Representative Athena Salmon introduced a bill to correct this by providing unlimited sanitary items to prisoners. And so she brought this bill before the Arizona Committee on Military Veterans and Regulatory Affairs. That panel is made up of nine men, none of whom, I'm assuming, have ever actually experienced a period. Normally, that's not a problem. Uh, A decent human being should be able to sympathize even with other humans who are in situations that they haven't personally experienced themselves. Unfortunately, apparently women who have periods don't really count as humans because periods are gross. I mean, sure, poop is gross and so is urine and bile and blood coming out of other orifices, but those are all things that men experience, so it's okay to talk about them. Nothing about menstruation is normal to these men, and unfortunately to men around the world, who prefer to pretend that it just doesn't exist, even when it's drastically important to acknowledge that it exists. For instance, when Representative Salmon introduced the bill, she pointed out that a box of pads costs $3.20, which is a lot of money for a prisoner. One of the panelists, Representative Jay Lawrence, interrupted her to say, Representative Salmon, can you keep your conversation to the bill itself, please? He later said on the record, I'm almost sorry I heard the bill. I didn't expect to hear pads and tampons and the problems of periods. I find all this particularly ironic considering that Lawrence himself has a face that looks exactly like a puckered asshole. I mean, it's ironic because of how sensitive he is about disgusting things when he clearly is one, but it's not ironic because so much shit seems to come out of that puckered asshole that I guess it's appropriate. Anyway, how embarrassing is it that this man who is clearly old as fuck isn't doing his fucking job and is getting in the way of women trying to do their jobs, which is to help other women because he thinks periods are icky. Oh, and then he said that he thinks most of the prisoners are liars and questioned whether or not this was a real issue at all. Luckily, despite the puckered asshole's objections, the bill just barely passed the committee five to four, and now it may move to a floor vote. I hope it makes its way to law so that, as one of the supporters told the news, we can start treating these prisoners like human beings, which then is likely to help them behave like human beings and stand a chance at actually leaving prison with a semblance of their own humanity intact. In the meanwhile, men, grow the fuck up. Learn what half the population has to deal with on a regular basis. It'll make the world a better place.